and welcome back to episode seven of the Say What's podcast. Woo! So we're on a bit of a roll now. So today's episode, what would you like to discuss? Well, I thought we'd do a bit of pregnancy cravings. Yeah. Unusual pregnancy cravings. Um, I popped a question box up because in the last... Um, started feeling it when I was just before Paris, I think. Um, a certain craving of mine, which is very bizarre. But also not because I've read it on Google and a lot of people have had it. Um, I also had a fair few people message me on my question box to say that they'd had the same craving. Not that I'd posted mine because I'm just not been on Instagram. Um, but yeah, I then did a question box on unusual pregnancy cravings. So I thought I could read some of them out because a few people did say I really want to know some people's. Yeah, yours is sort <laughs> of, I would say, developed over what the last couple of weeks. Mm. And then we looked into it and it can mean certain other things. I mean, yes. do you want to tell them what it is or do you want yeah. to read? So basically, I've always loved the smell of like, I don't know whether anybody, there's, there's certain like showers and certain um, like buildings that you can go into or whatever, it's a lot of, especially if they're under construction. And the smell of like damp plasterboard smells so good. I don't know whether anybody's ever smelled that. No. I mean, I've smelled it, but I've never been uh, attracted to it. I've always thought it smells really nice. It kind of almost smells like when, you know, on like almost like a summery day and then there's rainfall and it's it's got that like rain smell. I love that smell as well. Anyway, the past couple of weeks, which this can mean um, uh, iron deficiency. So I'm getting my iron checked this week. um, Lack of minerals and things. Because if you're seeking... Because you ba- basically, you your baby earthy. takes all of your nutrients and stuff. So the mum can be left quite without, even if you are eating quite a lot of high nutrient foods, which I actually am. Aside from all of the shit that I <laughs> eat, I eat a lot of fruit. I'm eating a lot of like eggs, vegetables. Mm. It is a, uh, a varied diet with a little bit of extra on top. A little extra, extra. Um, but yeah, so it can mean an iron deficiency, but basically the last couple of weeks I've had this like feeling where I'm like, oh, I just want to like, I want to smell some plaster really, really bad. Like craving it to the point where I can even feel it now. When I start to think about like plasterboard, plaster, whatever, wet plaster, mixing up my own plaster, <laughs> my mouth starts to do like, um, like a mouth orgasm, not like a, oh, <laughs> like a <laughs> sal- 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 yeah, salivating. salivating. And I'm like, then I'm like, oh my God, what can I possibly do to like stop well, the craving? And it also is then like, I'm thinking, okay, like chalk will do or like cement or just something like I just want like I want to sit and mix my own plaster basically I want to smell it all I want to smear it across all the walls I want to sit and smell it and I also want to eat it eat it that is that's bizarre. and it's and it's known as I don't know whether it's pika or picker but the, the craving non-nutrient value non-foods like some of them can be like the ends of like cigarette butts I've read um, which I also wouldn't mind just picking up and having it. <laughs> I don't smoke, but like just the thought of like just sticking it, on the end of a cigarette butt. It mentioned like earthy material, earthy, earthy ashy, minerals. Yeah. Like so, minerals of the earth, like rock and stuff that don't yeah, have anything. Yeah, I could eat a rock. You can picture what a rock or plaster takes, it's like earthy and mineral, natural mi- elements. Yeah. yeah. So now, you know, now we're talking about it, even I could fancy a little bit of rock. <laughs> Can hear the sea, a little bit of salty mineral. No, not salty. I want like mm. chalky, gritty. It's hard to explain, but some it, it actually has become a little bit intrusive to the point where I'll be sat and then I'll remember that I want it and then I'm like, it. Oh, this sounds so weird. This is so fucked up. Can't believe I'm even saying this, but it almost turns your body on that you want you have not told me that part because you want it so much it's weird i can't explain it but i did speak to a few girls who put in me ain't like this in my party sausage (laughs) that'd be a good craving wouldn't it (laughs) not gonna happen honey um (laughs) but there was uh there was a few people who'd put in the question box like plasterboard cement soil 
duh. And I thought, yeah, they're all in my category, which is like picker, whatever. And um, I did message a few of them. And there's this one girl who I kind of know and she's lovely. And she was speaking to me about hers with soil. And she was saying like, she would be, um, I might not get all of this right, but just the like basics of it is that basically she would go past like um, forests or um, like places with loads of trees, like parks or like a roundabout that was made of soil that's got all plants and stuff in. And she said she would have like the urge to get out and just go and literally like dig up dirt, <laughs> dig up dirt and eat soil. And she said to me that she used to go into her back garden even at 1am and like dig up some soil to, and eat soil. Oh, actually go as far as... Putting it in it. her mouth. Yeah. And what? And she couldn't stop it. And, and there Surely was, that's not safe. There was another lady. I don't know, actually. There was another lady that, um, who said that she she had the plasterboard one. I don't think I replied to this one because I just there was quite a few of them. But she's, I, there was a woman who said that she chipped a little bit off a wall, every, just a tiny bit, and, and ate it every single day. Um, and there was loads of others. Like, let me read a couple of them out because this will make you feel like I'm not so strange because when I... Yeah, well, it tastes what? like, oh, oh, I'm just... I'm, there's a wall that we're not really using or we're going <laughs> to knock it down. So I'm just going to start chipping the plasterboard off. This is randomly like one day. You didn't even tell me this and you never said it turned you on. But she it's just not, says... It's not turning me on like, oh, plasterboard. <laughs> it's like... If you leave me for a plasterboard, <laughs> I'll be absolutely <laughs> devastated. <laughs> Um, um no it's like it's a feeling of like it's it yeah, takes it, over your body it's like a craving yeah like, like you know oh Jay my went, God. a craving whatever but yeah. um and she's like i'm just gonna start chipping away at this plaster because we're gonna remove the wall in the future anyway and this is like randomly and i'm like well, what are you on about and you're like, oh, no, i just <laughs> really i just i just don't no, just i just really want this plaster can't we just plaster somewhere now? And I'm like, what's going on? Yeah. It's pretty scary. It is weird. I because was also look looking like, online. You know, on, like uh, possessed. I was on Google, like looking on um, Screwfix and being q to see if I could just get my own plaster, just to sit there and be able to smell it. We also had um, a bit of a nightmare in the house with the electrics. And so we've had to like dig out um, <clears throat> the wall. And so it's had to be filled with plaster. When I knew a plasterer was come in, I was so excited thinking when they've left, I'm literally going to go and smell and lick those walls. But by the time I got down here, it completely dried. There was no smell of plaster. It's I need like wet plaster. That's what I really need. So mm. licking it wouldn't have done any, uh, any, any, it wouldn't have done me any justice. Um, I also bought some Crayola chalk from, that was a bit of a low <laughs> from Amazon. I didn't know because about this either. I just want to, I just want to smell it and see if I can get that kind of like chalky feeling craving. It's it's a weird one, but even now I'm salivating at the thought of potentially being able to sit in a room that's like I want to go and work on a construction site. I want to put high vis vest, high high vis vest on, and I want a job in construction. I do think you need to go and get your minerals checked. I am getting my mineral. You go go get your minerals <laughs> checked. <laughs> I am. I, I am. Do. I am. I can't help but think. That's... No, I am. I am. I'm going this week because mm. I've got my um my uh, gestational diabetes test mm. tomorrow as well. So I'm going to book that while I'm there. So anyway, these were some of them, obviously anonymously. Um, crunchy powder like clay before you mix it, and I wanted to eat sand. So she obviously had pika or pika as well. Yeah, that's funny that because. These like scents or smells must be deep in your head, and then when it's craving, you're like, oh, because like, who they even are. thinks of like they oh, are when because you know when first mixed on a building site. When we were in London, like, when have you smelt that? Mm, when we were in London, we walked under a bit of a construction thing, and the smell, I smelt it, and I think that's what triggered it. And I was like, oh my god, why does that smell? I mean, I thought it smelled good anyway, like plaster, but I could mm. really smell it. It was like really heightened. And I think that's what, no, it, yeah. That's Maybe must that's have like been anchored what, That's what triggered it. And now I'm like, oh, I just want to eat it. I want to bathe in it. I want to <laughs> roll in it. I want to roll like a pig <laughs> in plaster board. <laughs> well, um, okay, a few Valentine's more. Valentine's Day is coming up soon. No, we'll get like, that prepared for you. No, I just want you to get me, what, is it skimmer? Mm. I want my own skimmer. I want my own... Oh, one of them cement mixers. 
Instead of I'm, like I'm gonna get in the mixer. Chocolate, I'm gonna smother myself in plastic. <laughs> I will eat you up. <laughs> <laughs> no matter where you put it, I will eat it. You don't have to wait for Valentine's Day or Christmas this year. I'm gonna leave as soon as this podcast finishes. I'm on my way to being cute. <laughs> um, anything burnt, burnt toast, burnt chips, uh, frosties. That's not an unusual one. Burnt I have about one, three bowls that's quite a day. A I could have eaten soap, like washing powder. This was one that constantly came up was um, pouring detergent um, or like fabric conditioner. Um, one of the, a big one was the Radox bath. I think that's bubble bath or shower gel. People <clears throat> either want to eat that. They either want to put it in a sponge, soak up the water and then drink the sponge water. I mean, I'm not judging because mine, I want, I want yeah. to fucking eat plasterboard. Um or just smelling detergent, sit there and smell it, like, but wanting to eat it. Um, what else is that that's strange? I mean... Spanish floor cleaner. Oh, my God. This was the most common one. I actually seen this on Molly's YouTube. Um, she did a third trimester video the other day. And she said she's got a fascination uh, with sponge, like, actually, like, cleaning and, um, like rinsing out sponges you might have seen on her instagram she what? was like washing tommy's hand so she gets yeah, the I soap and the sponge and then she just wants to wash 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 with the sponge to, but a lot to of, smell it or yeah, just but, to do it no just to do it but then a lot of women's is related to sponges and they what they do is even like dirty water some people clean water some people like radox bath they get all of the water in the sponge and then they either want to eat it. But the biggest one was sniffing fresh sponges. Some women are like, I I literally go through five sponges a week where I just want to get them out of the packet and smell a fresh wow. brand new sponge. I always thought it was literally something that you could, you know, eat. Like people go, oh, I've had char, I'm addicted to Worcestershire sauce crisps or something. Something really weird. I didn't know yeah. it's to do with like actions and smelling. Well, it's, it's, it's a bit of both. Do you know what I mean? Mm. You know, mine's gone from McCrispy to plasterboard. I would say Cocoa Pops is up Cocoa there as Pops well. Cocoa Pops is a big Tay one. Taya's about five bowls a day. All right, calm down. Let's not tell everyone. <laughs> um, okay, so yeah. One of our friends used to eat washing powder. Uh, someone's put, my mum has always been a veggie and she used to stand outside the butchers wanting to bite raw meat when she was pregnant with me. Wow. And I've ne and she's she's put I've and she's put I've never liked meat even as a child. My boss craved chewing on bath sponges, clean new ones, and she would keep them in her bag. Smelling permanent mark pens. Someone's put mm. I crave I craved chalk. Um, someone's put looking to pick up could be a sign of deficiency. Um, obviously that's what I need to uh, do, do. Do many people have the ice one? Yes, I think ice is here. quite common, isn't ice it? Ice cubes by the pint, just literally crushed ice. I had a go at it. It was quite nice, but it didn't yeah, do, I it think, weren't like plasterboard for me. I think that I could understand that one. Yeah. Someone put, I had this weird thing called pick out and I wanted to go and gobble dirt and smell earthy. <laughs> and that's, that's the same girl who I spoke to who actually did eat soil every day. Someone puts, I'm a secret sponge sucker. <laughs> <laughs> Eating bubble bath. A sponge was my worst. The smell of new sponge, like literally sponge. Do you know what? I, I feel like we need to go and buy some sponges now. No, I, it doesn't do anything for me. I can't, I can't even picture what a new sponge. I can't. Sponge. Someone's put sucking pennies and my husband's armpits. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Mine's definitely not that. Um, what else have we got? Mine was damp and moldy air con. God, no, that's weird. So I don't think this there's one, anything this, worse than look, damp. This, this is what you wish it was. Sex all the time. <laughs> and randomly soap if I could have, I'd have eaten it. I'm what, confused. What I thought a craving was purely food. No, it can Now it's getting into actions. What sits dipped in cream eggs? Toilet paper. She's eating toilet paper. Oh my God, dog food. Yeah. Bleach and whiteboard pens. I used to pour disinfectant into a cup and sit there smelling it. Not, be, not me, but my mum used to crave sucking on a flannel in the bath when I was pregnant. My friend, friend ate sponges. Steam coming up from the mop, mop bucket. I wanted to eat new car tires. I couldn't get enough of the smell. <laughs> Mine was smelling a bonfire or a fag. Yeah, there's there's so many crazy ones. Blue dental spray, hand gel, toothpaste. I eat it by the tube. Literally so many crazy ones. That so is, now you know it's not yeah. just me. Was there anyone that was saying checked. stuff like crisps or chocolate? Or did you well, ask for weird I asked for unusual. Because I'd like to see what... I asked for unusual ones because I think... Just general cravings can just be 
whatever, chicken nuggets, cocoa pops, whatever it is. So would a craving tend to be <clears throat> one thing throughout the whole pregnancy? Or is it just varies from week to week? Like, I think I when people look back on that. their pregnancy, they probably talk about the one that they most wanted, don't they? Yeah. Or the most but then some people one. will have a, yeah, or some people will have a few. I think I've gone through a couple of different phases. Like a McCrispy, I wouldn't, I wouldn't drive to go and get that now where I went through a phase where I'd think about it every single day. And mm. I don't think I've had one in a couple of months. No. I think the Toffee Nut Cream Cold Brew was definitely one. That was a classic. That was, that, that was I think everyone created a craving over that. Yeah, 100%. I think it was a real good. I didn't like it at start, but then I wanted to be included. So I started to like it. It was it, nice. It was good. Really good. Um, and I would still continue to have that one. Not all the time, but I would still continue to have but, that. Yeah, I remember at the time it was make or break. It was life or Wake death. Wake up and you're like, we have to go and go drive half an hour to get it. Yeah, I was angry until I yeah, had it. Yeah, and if it was crap, it would ruin your day. Yeah. I don't know whether that's just you in general or that's you probably because you're just pregnant. <laughs> Spoiled bitch. I'm not sure on that one. <laughs> um, and now I'd say a cere cereal's been a, a serious contender throughout the whole pregnancy, I'd say. I think Cocoa Pops is your go-to. Cocoa Pops is definitely my go-to, but I did have three bowls of Crave yesterday. It just mm. depends, really. I had Cheerios this morning, but Cocoa Pops has definitely been a big one, I'd say, the last three weeks, hasn't it? Mm, definitely. Like, rather than, you know, Jack can be eating, like, a full-blown meal, and I'm like, oh, I just want to have some Cocoa Pops. It's quite an easy one to make you as well. I'm yeah, you that. like that one, yeah. don't you? It's a bit easier than driving an hour to, to Starbucks. Starbucks. This is one of the, <laughs> the, down the motorway. better ones, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, that's pregnancy cravings. I mean, I, I know that some of you are going to be very alarmed thinking, like, of all the things <laughs> like some of my friends who i've messaged they're like i've just never heard of anything like this in my life i'm like i can't help it literally just can't help it that is interesting so yeah um is there any sort of uh whilst we're on the category of the pregnancy cravings mm -hmm. is there any baby updates there's a lot of people that have followed us from the ivf journey on the youtube where are we at now so we're 28 right before the 28 end. weeks tomorrow so we actually officially start the third trimester tomorrow, which for me, it actually blows my mind because we were three days when we found out. It still feels like it could have been four weeks ago for me that. For me, it's like fast and it's slow because we found out so early. I thought the first 12 weeks, is it traditionally 12 weeks is when you would tell yeah, the general traditionally. friends and family. I felt like that, t like by the time we got to 12 weeks, I was like... It feels like a lifetime before we've even got to where people would traditionally say or know. Know what you're saying. But then also the <laughs> fact that you're in the third trimester on, on Monday, it also feels like it's gone quick. Like, I think it's 85 days to go today. And I remember when I was doing that kind of countdown from Christmas, 80 something days, and it went like that. So for me, and the thing is, is after Christmas, I always think my birthday comes around really quickly and that's March the 18th and she's due on April the 3rd. So for me, I'm like, it's, it literally is going in a blink. I think from 20 weeks has gone the fastest. I can't believe like when we first looked at the screen and remember the first heartbeat yeah. in Spain? Yeah. And she was just a blob. Uh, just a blob. She was like, oh. She was a speck on it, the earth. Yeah, obviously he'd zoomed her in, but he was like, that's uh, like Your two, baby. two millimeters yeah. with a heart. So yeah. obviously the heart's within the two millimeters of the whole body. And the first scan that we had like here. Like an insect size. Yeah, the first scan that we had here, she was seven or six or seven and she just looked like a slug. Mm. Just it, a little. I, it still blows my mind the way a baby can be created. Yeah. And so fast. Yeah. It's, really? it's crazy. And when you look at like people pregnant and stuff, sometimes you can think, God, if it was like she's been pregnant for ages. Or sometimes it can feel like, well, that was the quickest pregnancy I've ever known. I feel like mine has been really quick. I mean, probably you guys who have had to listen to me go on about it <laughs> for the last however long, 25 weeks are like, no, this has been a long pregnancy. <laughs> but for me, it's gone so quickly. And I think I've been, <clears throat> I don't want to say lucky, but I, I do feel lucky. I feel grateful that I, I have had a very, very good pregnancy, haven't I? Yeah. Minus I think the... Over the start, the start I thought was all awful. And the early bleeding. And I thought this is going to be a very long journey. Implantation bleeding. Which was but I think at the time. as soon as 
you got to the where she started kicking and you could feel her. Well, then... be- before then, I think when we got to that like 10, 12 week mark, I started to trust my body a lot more. Yeah. And it started to become a lot more enjoyable. Mm. I would say the, the first eight weeks with the implantation ble- bleeding, I also, um, I think I had COVID as well or a flu no. that was really, really bad. Um, but it felt like COVID because I've had it before and it felt very, very similar. Um, then that first eight weeks, which, you know, I was trying to navigate, ooh, trusting my body, knowing that she'd be okay through me being unwell and those kind of things. Um, it's been amazing, to be honest. And I've been really, really lucky that, you know, I haven't had, I, I did go through a couple of weeks of morning sickness, not actually being sick, but feeling it, but not constantly. Like a lot of women have constant feeling of sickness. And honestly, my heart goes out to them because there is nothing worse than feeling sick. Mm. Like that is actually heartbreaking that some people just constantly feel sick. And I've been very, very lucky that I haven't had that. I would say the only, the, um, after the start, the only the parts that have been slightly like uncomfortable is you've had like the flu or COVID. We don't, it, well, it was never actually measured as COVID. I've been ill about four times, I'd yeah, say. Yeah, you've had like three or four times and that you were like really Takes struggling. Takes it out of you. Like really yeah. struggling. And I think that's because obviously you've got a low immune system. Mm-hmm. Like we've, we've traveled a bit. We've been to like London and Scotland and places. And then as soon as you got home, it's just boom. Yeah, when you run down or yeah. you're immune. But um, but yeah, other than that, it's uh, uh, been... Other than that, it's been... Uh, it's been amazing. It's been perfect, really. Yeah, and in the IVF process, you know, I, I say this all the time. I know it's different for everybody. I know some people can have a really hard time with doing the injections and can feel side effects from the medication and stuff. But I also had a very straightforward IVF process in terms of I was okay. And I always say this from more from a, like a mental aspect. I um was very okay mentally yeah through that and I have been very okay mentally through my pregnancy yeah which was because a, yeah sorry sorry which was a bit of a worry because not because I have had um you know really poor mental health before it, it it was a bit of a worry like oh my god with all of these hormones and everything and I know I'm like when I'm just ovulating or when I'm during my period like what I can what I have been like was a bit worried about all of the hormones and the changes in my body and like, what am I going to feel like? But it's like, it, it's been really You just really sort positive. of took it in your stride. I think now when I like, if you, it's so funny, like when you don't have the knowledge or you've not experienced it before, how like the uncertain really like scares you and it's all uncertain. Because I remember before we'd even started the IVF, Obviously, we'd been trying because for so long and we, we were trying as long as possible naturally to, because the thought of like the IVF and that was quite uncertain and quite scary daunting. and daunting. And that's why we then ended up advised to do the IUI. But remember when we spoke to that new doctor about the IVF, it just completely put us off. Mm-hmm. And we were like, oh, I can't believe it. Like this, we're going to have to do this for six months and do this. And <laughs> it just... You got to speak to the right person so, that connects with you. Yeah, and then when we spoke to the new, Dr. the new Benito. Doctor Benito, he put it in a case. It of, was very. This, no, no. Oh, this is good news, and he that sort of set it. That set the tone. On it set the tone, and then when we started going to him, and he was just funny and light-hearted and wasn't expecting any like negative things. It just it made us feel like oh, every time we got, we did that associated, like going to see him and updates is really good, Pleasurable. exciting. Great, great, great. And now yeah. I know I, I would, if anyone's in a situation where they can't, uh, you know, have been trying, uh, the only regret I would say is I wish we did I, IVF sooner, years ago. Mm-hmm. And before I wouldn't have even done IUI, but that's obviously only our experience. Yeah. I also but, think it's really, really important as well because there's a lot of people um, in the GG now who are thinking of IVF, plans for IVF, going through IVF. You know, many who have done it as well who this might not apply to or it might apply to again in the future if they do IVF, you know, another time. But it's just so important to find a doctor that you really connect with and that you feel comfortable with because 
I mean, you'll only understand really this if you have watched our fertility journey on YouTube. But like Jack just said, we had one appointment when we first spoke about IVF and it seemed like algebra, like the whole procedure seemed like algebra and that there was so many steps that we had to even get to before we even started. And it all seemed very negative. And she made points about my weight and said that I basically have got to lose weight and get my BMI down to a certain number before I even begin, which I found very triggering, very overwhelmed when we speak about all of this on YouTube. So if you know you are going through, I do really recommend that you follow off to Little Jenny on YouTube because it was very detailed, especially on your behalf. You feel like you get every detail that you could have. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, we had that one appointment and we came away. I came away in tears. You were very underwhelmed um, and obviously upset for me. And then it felt like, oh, it, it felt so far away that we didn't even want to start it. And then I was like, you know what? It was actually uh, the GG. A lot of people messaging me saying, don't go back to that doctor. And I thought I kind of had no option because we'd already done IUI with them. And I thought, you know, we need to stick with the same doctors. I've done all my tests there. They know all of my history. I've got to kind of stay in that zone now. So many people said, no, don't stay where you're unhappy and don't stay with a doctor that, you know, you, you, you're not vibing with. You know, go and see somebody else, get a second opinion. And I'm so glad that I had messages of encouragement like that because then when we went to see Dr. Benito, my, I don't think my weight was even mentioned or if it was, it was very like just mm. not really anything. And it was like, when, do, oh, let's get, let's get it started. Yeah. It was made so simple. And I also, could, sorry to interrupt, okay. but he had also said, um, RUI is not going to work for you when the other hospital had said, right, we're going to do another two rounds of RUI. Yeah. So he said based on this to the stats that he had i don't know what was different i think possibly he it was looked the it was the length of, into the sperm it was also the length of time that we'd been trying he said if you've been trying for six years you shouldn't be doing iui yeah and i think it also looked deep in and he said even though there's movement and there's this and there's quantity of the sperm like they wouldn't move in the right way to that actually get pregnant he from IUI. So he said, even though on the surface it says they're moving, so you'd go, oh, great score. They're not moving in the right direction. Mm. I don't know whether he had done something different or dived into it deeper, but he was like, let's just do IVF. And then we obviously had raised our conditioned fears, like, oh, we've heard this. And then he was just like, no. no. And the only thing I would say is we were we paid to go private. So let's say you're not in that situation and you go to the NHS. Mm -hmm. Would you, do you think that you could have a doctor that's probably at your local hospital and say, hey, I, you know, I don't like that doctor, I want someone else. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know whether that's a choice. No. I don't know. Maybe you... we're very privileged in that situation. Yeah. Where we could make that decision. If, you, if you're on the, yeah. if you're going through the NHS and doing it through the UK, um, maybe that's totally different. So yeah, we might be know. a bit ignorant to that. Yeah, I don't know whether you can say, right, I'm, I'm, let's say we're based in Leicestershire, I'm going to go and try the Coventry one. That's still, I don't know. Um, but it it did, it was literally like chalk and cheese from one mm. doctor to the other. Um, her, I, she was extreme, the, the one that we ended up not going with, she was extremely knowledgeable. She was great in terms of knowledge, but... We just, when you're creating like a baby, you're deeply emotional. There wasn't really that uh, sort of empathy from her side to really connect with us. There was so. no personnel. And also so. if you, if it seems like it's very daunting and there's all of this that you've got to do even before and you come away and you feel daunting about it, that's how it all starts. And it's like, then you go into it thinking, God, this is a lot. Whereas because of how Dr. Benito put it to us, we thought this seems really straightforward. And then the whole thing was really straightforward. You know, it was, yeah, it was a really, really, and I know that this is not the same for everybody and everybody hasn't um, been lucky enough to maybe have the doctor that makes it that way for them, but just speaking our truth and from our perspective, a lot of people have a really 
like crazy and I did perception of what IVF is going to be like on you on your body and you know because a lot of women have experienced that but we had a really really positive experience with IVF and anybody who ever messages me about IVF or wants to talk about IVF I always say to them look we had a really really good experience with it it was extremely yeah. positive it was straightforward we we went into it with a really positive <clears throat> mindset of like this is just going to be what it's going to be and we just went along with it I I know everyone's different in this way as well I didn't try and understand every single part of the process I just thought I'm just going to go along with it. I didn't try and get my head around every tiny little bit. Obviously, the basics you, you need to know. Yeah. Um, but I just thought, let's just go along with it. And I think that really, really helped. Yeah, I would say, th- like, the alternative is, is, is if you've been trying for years, uh, you're basically just wasting time. Like, mm-hmm. we wasted years and years. And then if you think about all the pregnancy tests, the extra couple of years, and you've had another 30 pregnancy tests, and you've got excited and then Mm. not had the results you think you're putting yourself through all of that when you can just have an expert look and say they might even like do all the tests on you say hey do you know what you're actually both all right keep Mm -hmm. going and then at least you know so I think it's just going and getting help as early as you possibly can yeah and I also know that there's there's long waiting lists for the NHS so in that way don't you don't waste any more, more time on top of that do you know what I mean? Like go and get your name down on the list or speak to your doctor about how you, you know, you can st- at least start the process because if there is like a two year waiting list, depending on where you live, because it's, they call it the postcode lottery with IVF because some, um, I never knew that. Yeah. Because some places, um, in the UK, you get free IVF on the NHS and some you don't, I think. Okay. Um, but I know that there is waiting list depending on where you're based. So what you don't want to do is just keep putting it off, which is something that we did before we moved to Spain, before we had IUI, before we saw anybody. Yeah. I just kept putting it off and putting it off. It threw like s- silly things like, oh, I don't want to get my vagina wrong. Oh, I don't want to have those checks. Oh, it's going to be so uncomfortable. Oh, it's going to be really awkward. Like, I don't know whether anybody else is like that, but I, those kind of things can put me off going yeah, and, and seeing like, somebody. Oh, it will probably work this month. So let's just have another go. Yeah. And then you just keep thinking. I think, when, it, yeah, if when, it's something you really want, just start the process, even if it means you've got to wait two years, you know, for NHS, like get your name down, like start yeah. to research or... And also go if, obviously, you'd be in a relationship, but um, get the guy to get checked out as well. Because I would always thought if you can't get pregnant, it'd probably be the woman. Can I just say, there's a lot of women who won't be in a relationship doing IVF as well with um, donor sperm. Ah, Okay. Yeah. You know, women who aren't in, in a relationship case, who that. feel like the time's ticking and they they want to yeah, have a baby a and they're and they're doing donor sperms. But I've yeah. spoke to a few of women from the GG who are doing that. That's a um, good point. But yeah, I. But if you are in a relationship and you're thinking it's yourself, it could be the guy. Yeah. To get the guy to get checked out. Definitely. As early as possible. Definitely, because well. I always thought it was me. Yeah, I always did. Always thought it was me. I thought. I just, well, I just think that's from like natural women. Just you, you just, just think, think, oh, it's me. Yeah. But then when we look deeper into it, the, it, our doctor actually said, and you'll hear this said on our fertility videos on YouTube, I would never get pregnant with Jack's sperm as it was naturally. Mm. He said it had improved from where it was. <clears throat> Um, like he said, there was the quantity was now there, the movement was there, but he just said the way that it's moving, it's just not going to go. Yeah, and he said you will not get pregnant naturally, like that with with Jack mm. sperm. So for all those years and and heartbreak, and I mean it's all part of the journey. Um, heartbreak with you know no pregnancy and you know ovulation tests and pregnancy tests and all of those kind of things. It's like well <laughs> it wasn't gonna you know maybe by some miracle someday but it wasn't really going to happen for us naturally without IVF so it's always better to go and get those checks and and have Mm. it have it be told as well um 100 there was something else I wanted to say on IVF and I can't think what it was I can't for the life of me remember no well I've had a very special question Mm. from someone in my dms and they said something along the lines of how does this is related te- to IVF? Oh no, it's on to the. Uh, oh, on to the next now. 
Oh yeah, sorry. If you got any more points? No, no, no. I, I was just, I'm just wondering what you're gonna say. No, it was basically <clears throat> um, a woman. She's in a relationship, right? And she said, "How does Taylor eat all of that food? I can't remember when it was a couple of weeks ago. How does she eat all of that food and not fart <laughs> or worry about farting all day?" And I obviously replied back and said, "She don't no, worry. <laughs> she doesn't worry. There's not a worry in her bone." She'll just fart anywhere, anytime. Yeah. <laughs> and then she sent back saying, oh my God, I would love to get to that point. Um, and I said, well, how long have you been in relationship? And I think she said two or three years. And um, she said, how do you, basically, how do you get to that point? What are the mm -hmm. steps in a relationship? We've, we've been coming up to maybe nine or 10 years now. And we have been through all of these steps. Mm. Now, if you're in a relationship six months, a year, two years, there's certain I would say there's certain guys blokes that are like men's men blokes and they'll probably you know shit with the door open fart on their first date and they don't care and I love that and I wish I could be more like that but I would say even in a new relationship maybe they'll sort of tame it back but then I'd say the big one is the woman side of things I don't know why but Everyone well, sees the women as a lady, lady. <laughs> and Emily if they fart or they poo, the men are like, oh my God, you know, that's putting me it's off It's society. A woman's got to yeah. be like this. So man's got to be like how this. How would you say, like, we're in our own early relationship, how was that? You describe how we were <clears throat> Well, I'll describe from my point from of view. From your point of view, and I'll just go with mine. Okay. Yeah. So... Of, I mean, this is like, it's such a girl thing. Like this is just something that's always spoken about in friendship groups and stuff um, is that you would just, ne I mean, this might, all the girls I know, when you're first meeting somebody or you're dating or, you know, they're sleeping around or whatever, or you even living with them and it's the first like few years, you're like, there's just no way. Like if you, if you farted in front, I mean, Jesus Christ, the stomach ache I've been through that he's not even worth, <laughs> right? <laughs> the stomach ache I've been through from holding in farts is hell on earth. Your stomach becomes like a vacuum and it's like, you're just literally waiting for them to go so you can go. <laughs> <laughs> and I swear to God, it is the worst waiting for that. Like what you can create is actually very unhealthy. Mm. Um, but you, you somehow you just do it for years because you just can't think of anything worse. And it's like, I'll remember times where, when we were on holiday and <laughs> when we went on our first ever holiday to Santa we, we hadn't been going out. We'd only been, uh, we no, weren't we, even going out. We were seeing each we were other. We were seeing each other. So we'd only been seeing each other like seen a couple of, what, maybe four or five months, four months. But we, we weren't still. No, it wasn't official. It was basically official, but we weren't like official. So anyway, we went to Saint-Tropez. We actually went on a little tour de France and um, Jack drove. And we went to Saint-Tropez, Cannes, Nice and Monaco. And we stopped off like for a couple of nights each. And it was amazing. However, when we first got to, I think it was called the it, Cube. San, it's San called the Cube. Yeah, if you ever stayed in the Cube. I mean, it was, we, we went all out. It was quite an expensive hotel. Yeah, it was, it was. but it was amazing. Anyway, yes. we got to the hotel and, you know, normally if you walk into a hotel room and it, you see that it's all like glass and you'd be like, oh my God, this is incredible. But honestly, I walked in, I was fucking devoured. The <laughs> toilet had a glass door on it so you can see through to someone having a shit. The so did the shower, which is my worst nightmare, like body conscious. It was basically just part of the bed, wasn't it? The back of the bed was the glass of the shower. And then with the toilet with a glass door. Yeah. It, do you know what? Even I was like, oh, fuck. Yeah. I, you know, where am I going to do my morning? The, there was nowhere for, you'd have to go turn, spin around and not look whilst I'm going to the toilet. Like there was nowhere. You, yeah. You couldn't run, you couldn't hide. I didn't mind the shower part, just mainly the toilet. No, we, we'd never seen each other in the shower. We were at that stage where the door was shut. You go in, you have your shower, you come out. You know, might see you in a towel. You might see me in a towel, but you know, you're not going to stand there naked in front of each other or see each other naked in the shower, and it's like normal. So I was thinking, oh my god, like I'm on holiday, I'm going to be stuck here. How am I going to like go to the toilet and stuff? And I remember, th I'd, like, I'd hardly ate the whole trip because I was so terrified of needing to poo or needing to fart. Like I remember, we had like a, ch a chicken Caesar salad a day and yeah, some, we did. some ham at night. Um, it was really, really bizarre, but this is how much it scared me. And I remember we went to one place and it was like on the port 
you won't remember it um but we had our chicken Caesar salad I think that's actually the the thing that we could only afford on that trip because it was so expensive um so anyway yeah we were there and I was like I'm just gonna go um to the toilet and I thought this is my chance to to have a poo because I'm absolutely desperate and I was in there much longer you know I was like doing literally the the, the shit in Olympics in there trying to get this poo out as quick as possible just in fear that he might be thinking that I'm having a poo like <laughs> yeah. this is the this stage is the that weird you're in thing, isn't it yeah you're like, like why I don't, don't want them just... to if, if, a minute, if a minute longer than three and a half minutes he's gonna start thinking I'm having a poo I can't be doing it like yeah but he, uh, sorry I'll let you keep going no, but on. even like you can't even why don't we just even say at the time I mean it was like 10 years ago we were younger but why don't you say oh that's, you know, a little bit uncomfortable when I need to go for a poo. Like you, those simple words. And you're like, oh, do you like maybe... Say that now. Maybe you go by the pool. Right? I'm just going to go and have a poo. Like they're just simple words, isn't it? But it, it's, it, it just doesn't happen. No. You're like, oh, I'm going to try you know, and I wanted you to think about. that I was some like really sexy, Yeah, but even sassy, I didn't want to like gorgeous. smell the room out. Even I was like, I remember like you going to the pool or something. Cause I, I'm just nipping back to get me flip-flops and I'd be like, Whoa. And, like <laughs> it's the same thing. I'm like, don't take longer than three minutes. Get in yeah, there, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know why. <laughs> I know. And I remember being in so there and it, it, it went on longer than I expected. And then I got back and I was thinking... I'm flustered now. I'm overwhelmed. I'm eating my food, but I'm I'm just thinking like, is he thinking I've had a poo? Is he thinking I've had a poo? Like, it's just bizarre how you think. And um, it is. It is funny. It, you must have done all of your toilet trips and stuff. Yeah, like I said, when I was like, out the room, and we must have just navigated it because obviously, I think I went for one poo, and I will never forget this. This is like hands on my heart. We got back, we travelled back um, to my mum and dad's house because that's where we were both basically living after yeah. this trip. And um, at the time I was in a really like, I was in a completely different place with like body and weight and stuff. You know, I was really conscious to be skinny and have a flat stomach and, you know, not eating what I should be and stuff per day and overtraining and whatnot. And um, I'd, I'd, I'd hardly eaten the whole trip anyway, like... I don't want that to be triggering for people. I'm just saying this is like pastime, you know, not me now. And um, when I got home, I never, I mean, it was like, it wasn't Euston Gate, but it was Euston Gate in a way because, oh my God, my stomach was just in bits. Like I was then thinking, oh my God, I need to go upstairs and have a really, really big poo. Cause you know, when you know you're home and you're like <laughs> bowels open, they're like, oh I'm home <laughs> I, need to, I need to shit so I'd be like I was upstairs like having a poo like I said oh, I'm gonna have a quick shower put the shower on I was having a poo that's the ultimate trick isn't it yeah that's a good one if if you, the hotel had its own thing you just say oh, I'm in the shower and then you can have a poo <laughs> but in ours you'd have been like no you're not in the door. <laughs> can see ya. um but yeah i was having like a really really big poo. i felt so much relief after that poo i'll never forget and then even when we moved in together and we were living in our first house um some of you might remember our first house it from took, it took Instagram. us years to get comfortable with that well I, I'll I tell, we were late I'm bloomers gonna, i'm gonna I tell have... you in a minute exactly but when we were in Sharnford, that's where we used to live in our first house i used to literally wait even to drink my coffee because I mean if you know you know like coffee it just lights the poo fuse um I used to wait and have my coffee after Jack had gone to work and you used to leave the house at about eight yeah probably about eight every day why am I farting right now <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I've just farted three times did you hear no, that? No, I, oh, I did. Really I don't. thought you moved your chair. No, Obviously, that's... I've just farted three times. Just speaking about it, <laughs> stinks. <laughs> anyway, um, so, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> don't smell that great. Anyway, okay. So I'd wait till Jack was gone about eight, and I'd literally <laughs> run out the bedroom, look out the look out the window, make sure he has actually gone, and then sit on the toilet and even in fear that he might be coming back because he's like forgot something i'd be quickly really quickly and i'd have the shower on as well even though it's not in the house oh my god to have a poo because i still we were living together and i still couldn't let him know that i was having a poo and uh, you wouldn't even uh, say at this point i'm going upstairs to have a no, poo which is weird it's so you just strange be like now. it would just be like shower time <laughs> Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And we, we'd been, you know, together a few years, buying a house. 
second house same thing it, it wasn't it we used to say at this point this was a different stage the second house we would I'd, say i'd love to know when was the point where it's now like i'm, right, gonna I'm just tell gonna you, go i know I'm just no not when you farted like when you're oh. going for a poo like uh, i'm going for, then okay. everyone's like all right dude i'll keep over here so i don't yeah, yeah, yeah. smell your fumes and make you feel a bit well second house um you know must have been together a few years now three four something like that um that was the phase where we'd go oh i'm just going up to the toilet that was it yeah i'm just gonna go to the toilet and you just knew someone was going for a poo anyway yeah second was you know going to the toilet and that was that and then there was this one time i think it was was it christmas eve yes it was, it was. you were drunk i was drunk and i was lying in bed at, well, this is my mum and dad's house because we'd been there for christmas eve or to wake up christmas day and i said to jack I was really drunk and I was like, I really need a glass of water. Please, can you go and get me one? He was like, no, go and get yourself one. I'm both really drunk. I'm like, please, please. And he's like, no, can you go down? I'm like, if you don't do it, then I'm going to fart. And he's like, you wouldn't. And I was like, I will. And he's like, no, you, on, would, you would not. And I was like, right, I'm going to do it then. He went, go on then. And I went, Pfft. and that, that was that the, was that was the, that that was was the parting gift. I feel like you've just got to get drunk and do it then. And yeah. Then <laughs> like make a joke of it even use that same if you need to use that same script yeah, do it. it and from that point i was it literally just changed, like didn't it? i was walking and burr, burr, yeah. burr. and then it became amusing and yeah you know you don't but really... hang on can i just say at this point jack did not let his go it's actually been i'd say a year and a half maybe even two years on no, top of that it wasn't wasn't I, I remember and i even remember having this conversation with my friend yeah, I hadn't got to that point. No. Like, it, it, and also after that, you got to the point. <laughs> hang on. It was only just before we went to Spain that you let out your first fart. And I said, just yeah, do I, it for fuck's sake. Yeah, I was like, what's holding me back? I'd built up this he, barrier. <laughs> that all and about? I was gagging for it. Like really just wanted him. I didn't. I wasn't bothered about hearing him fart. I don't know what a fart sounds like but i just wanted him to be able to do that because there is just nothing what there's no there's nothing better than just sitting Get there into that in your bed comfortable level and you can just go Row. and then the step after that is like pooing yeah like i sometimes go in the shower and you just walk in and go i'm just having a dump <laughs> I, normal, i'm not it? at that level i'm I still am. not at that level What's the point in having stomach ache? I remember how I used to talk I to you remember. in bed. Like, what's the point in having stomach ache? Like, just let out, like, uh, honestly. And I'd go, and I'd go, like, I feel, <laughs> I'd go, oh, it feels so good just to be able to do that and not have to worry about stomach ache and not have to get out of bed to do it. And I had just built up a mental block at this point. Which and, I totally get because I'm and it's four just, and a half it's years. A joke. It's, it took it, me to get to my yeah, true it's self. It's the worst feeling on earth, honestly. And do you know what? We are my family are a real family of farters, other than my mum. Your mum has never farted. Never. Ever. But me, Dad, ever. Sasha and India, sorry sisters, we are farters. So for four and a half years, that's that's love. That is love. And so for the answer to the question. So if she's in this point then with her partner, they're probably in a similar, I don't know what, what he does, but I how is she going to get out of it? I don't think, unless for some reason you can't drink or you don't drink, there is no option <laughs> but to drink. And just to <laughs> say, do you know so what funny. I feel like doing tonight? Do you know what would be really funny? If we both just fart and then we can just get past it and get Let's over get it. get over it. Or do some like truth is or it... dare and like do a dare, dare yeah. them to Trump. If she's at three years, she's getting to that point now. Like, I reckon you're better off getting it out early. You are. So if you're in a relationship. The longer it goes, And you've been in it for it a month or two, just get it out. I mean, I bet some relationships don't even care and they just do it. But if you yeah, are Yeah, but stuck, I also have some friends who just still, at very long-term relationships, they would never poo in front of their partner and they would never fart. I mean, I don't have many of them. Yeah, but what, like, you're, you've got to the point now where, like, if we've got, like, I don't know, friends over or family, you just walk along, fart and go, ooh. <laughs> like, I'm not at that level. I don't, like, I wouldn't, I, I've I wouldn't do levels. it in of your mum and dad. Wouldn't you? No. But there's certain people, like certain friends, boyfriends, or like, you know, obviously like Finn, India's boyfriend. Yeah, which and... I wouldn't do that in front of India. Like, whereas you just, you, I feel like- India you know, would do it in front of you. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, I remember like a few years ago, she was slightly embarrassed and now she's over that as well. 
Yeah. I actually quite like it because then it makes you feel like they, they can entrust in you. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like now India is comfortable enough around me. And then you're like, that's quite nice. Yeah. So, you know, if you do see me, just fart in front of me and then we know we're connected. I Yeah, I just think it takes, I mean, yeah, girls build up the small because a lot of men will already be farting. But if neither of you are doing it, you just need to be the person that opens it all up because I was that person. And now we live in great peace, <laughs> don't we, babe? <laughs> we're, in, <laughs> we're in bed and we're like... <laughs> It's a competition now. It is. I honestly I, never thought we'd ever get like that. No, but can I just I say what I really love? Saying, and I was like, they're disgusting. Like, and now, you know, we are those disgusting people. What I really, it, it's weird because like in my past relationship before you, I was in the phase of farting. But it's like, then you go back into the no, a, a, a new relationship and it all starts again. Yeah, because I do feel like when you're first like dating and stuff, you do want to, you don't want to show... You, you have to fake yourself. Even though they're natural, you don't want to show off the... The bad the side. The 50% that's all like, like, you know, the bad. You just try and pitch the good, don't you? Yeah. I feel like I really pitched the good. And then <laughs> as soon as we were tied in with that house mortgage, I was like, right oh. Yeah. But now it's great because, you know, I'll do a big... I, what's, what I find yeah, really you know satisfying what? now is that Jack can do a big fart and automatically I've got one coming in. It would be like... Rrr, rrr. Do you know what? It actually <laughs> makes me think the thought of having to re... Do you know? To, I, let's per, say I personally reason, will never leave you just <laughs> for the pure thing that I yeah. can't do another four and a half years, no farts. They're re getting back to that stage. I Surely we would be different now because we're like, you know, 10 years older than when we were. Like, you I wouldn't. think when you're younger, you think you it, wouldn't. it'd probably be the same. If, no, you, I don't if know. you were to be going, if you were dating somebody else right now, there is no way. I know you so well, you would not be farting. And you would not be saying that you need to shit. Mm. No way. No I don't know. fucking way. <laughs> you wouldn't. Yeah. Well, glad we're over that phase. I'm so glad. Like, I, I feel relief now. There's mainly of, because I've just farted like five times. <laughs> there is loads of different levels and phases for a relationship. I'm sure there's other people that can tell us even longer, like 15, 20 years. But let us it, know it, in the comments. Let us know in the comments if you fart in front of your partner and how long it took you to actually be able to fart in front of your partner, or if you don't fart in front of your partner. I believe the longer a relationship goes, it just gets better and better. I think so. I, I think you become more start, comfortable. Yeah, the comfort. I think being at ultimate peace with someone. Like now, Isn't I would say you're better. like you know me more than me. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Anyway, we've got to wrap this up because <laughs> yeah. we're running out of. And I feel like we've just spoken about farts for about forty minutes, but yeah. Like, so thank you so much again. Yes. If you would love to comment, leave a review. That would really, really help us. It will help us widen to other people to see the podcast as well, other yeah. than the GG members. Um, DM, let us know how it goes. Yeah, let us know if just, you're in this situation. Oh yeah, and we. I just, would love to have someone on, right? Who. Maybe like voice noters, like that they're going to do it. And then we're like, <laughs> go on, go on. You know what? But if you like, are going to do this through you, this podcast, you have to update us and we'll, we'll share the story. Yeah. DM us. If you want to like, you know, voice noters, it can be, well, I suppose it's not anonymous. If you wanted to do it, it'd be yeah, great to it would see be really, really good. how it went. And then ring us up the next day. And be like, it's just great. We need a whole fart progress segment on this podcast. Yeah. Okay. And I think that the, what's better is the longer someone's in it. Like, the, the, I think this girl was in it for years. You know, she's where we were. She's deep in the trenches. Yeah. She's screwed. She's got to work out. Yeah. I wonder if there's anyone like five or six years. Oh, do you know what? One thing as well is that I do remember a couple of times where I text my friend and said, I've just woke myself up farting in my sleep and I'm absolutely terrified that he heard it. Like there's mm. all those little moments I think there well. was one time when it I did and I pretended to be asleep. That was yeah, just wrong about. Yeah, I've done about. that to you as well. I don't know whether I'm making I've, it up. No, but, but I've done that about. to you as well when you've trumped in your sleep and I've pretended not to maybe hear it. Maybe it was me. Yeah, maybe it was me. <laughs> there's bloody all these hell, little things that hell. you forget about. What a world but... we live in. <laughs> anyway, okay, right, we go. Appreciate you all. Love you all. Love Bye. You. Bye.